I'll, I'll lead I'll lead us into prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for another day. We thank you for each and every single one of our brothers and sisters in Christ who are scattered all over the world um, who are tuning in and, and listening to this Bible reading. Lord, we pray that the, that the words that are read will bless those that hear them. And we pray that this brings new understanding and new revelation to each and every single one of us as we read through your word. Lord, we pray that your word blesses, and as you say in Isaiah 55, that absolutely none of your word will go out and return unto you void unless it has accomplished everything that you have sought it to accomplish. In Jesus' mighty name we pray this. Amen and amen. amen. I think you should start tonight. I started last week. Okay. Yeah. I mean, guys, welcome back to another episode. We are almost through Genesis. I mean, we've got... We're, we're a little bit past halfway. We're a little bit past halfway. But if you've been with us this whole time, uh, man, that's awesome. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Uh, because where we left off, it, we we, were, we kind of left off in the middle of a situation, right? So Jacob is on his way back. Remember, if you remember, Jacob was sent away because he stole his brother's birthright. He tricked his father. And this was really his mother's doing. He's just being a son that was, you know, listening to his mother. And then he ends up being sent away because he receives this birthright and they know Esau is mad. Esau wants to kill him. Esau literally says, after I finish mourning for my father's passing, I'm going to kill him. So he gets sent away. He goes and gets a wife and he goes through that whole ordeal of being a wretched, broken sinner. And we went through all that. Now, Jacob is, it's time for him to come back home. And in chapter 32, it begins, Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. So he called the name of that place Mahanam. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. I want to stop for one second real quick. I want to verify something. Let me open up the Hebrew here. And I want to show you guys something that's very interesting. So when we see here that it says Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him, we see that word malak, as I've told you guys before. And then Jacob, it says, then Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother. Again, that is malak. However, it's the plural form and, and the way it's set up here, it's malakim. But still, the same word we're looking at here. Malak is the root word. Um, and again, I, I, I just want to point this out because as I've shared with you before, that the translators actually determined that whenever talking about spiritual beings, they would translate this to angels. And whenever talking about humans, they would translate it to, you know, messengers. We see this in the New Testament. We see this in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the word is angelos. In the New Old Testament, the word is malak. So it's just an interesting thing to look at because we've been convinced that an angel is just this being that with wings and a halo. But technically, if you were reading this in the original language, the people that God sends, uh, the spiritual beings God sends are called the same thing that a human would call if I send someone. So that's actually not a, a title of being, but rather a title of role. So when you see angel, it's not a being, it's a job. Okay? Just wow. Wait. Is that, that's, 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 that's a good point you're bringing up. Is that like the when we look at angelos, in the Greek, is that like uh, you are sent to deliver, and 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 we we see the same thing with with Joseph. We see the same thing with Mary. Um, you know, Mary is told beforehand that this is what's going to happen. Um, Joseph is told this is what is going to happen. So again, it's 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 quite an quite an interesting point, and 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 definitely worth dipping into. I wonder if I can make this bigger real quick to show you guys something. So if you look on the left side of the screen where we have the Bible word study, let me go ahead and stretch it out. Um, so I opened up the Hebrew for the word malak. And as you see, the word malak is used in Hebrew in the form that I chose uh, in 213 times. And almost split half, you see it being used for angel. That's the blue side. And then the red side is messenger, right? So I can go down and show you. These are every time it's translated wow. messenger, 98 out of the 213 times. And then it's translated into angel, 110 out of the wow. 213 times. Then you just got these two little slivers here where it was translated to envoys and ambassadors uh, probably like a handful of times. Yeah, four times was it translated to ambassadors and envoys. Okay, so uh, 
that word again this is uh, this isn't salvation related this is just hanging out with mike and jd when we read the bible once i learned that it does force me to say okay wait so everything i've grew up thinking sometimes there's things that might not be accurate right whenever i think Amen. of the word angel i'm thinking of like these heavenly beings only right and yes most mm, of the time mm, a malak mm. is sent from heaven and it's a it's a spiritual being but humans can be angels you can be an yeah. angel. In fact, John the Baptist, John the Baptizer was an angel because the prophecy was that God was going to send an angel before him, right? It said messenger, but angel. So just wanted to throw it out there. Let's go ahead and go back into... Uh, yeah, interesting point, definitely. And again, this is what we, we always say, uh, you know, that you've got to be willing to deconstruct. Like Mark doesn't know everything. I don't know everything. Um we, we doing this Bible reading together and ultimately we doing it together in front of an audience. So um, <laughs> if, if you've got questions, if there's anything we've missed, uh, you know, I've gone through a couple of the comments. We haven't had many questions in, in a sense of what has already gone past, but if there are any questions or anything we've missed, please put it in the comment section and we will address it. Amen. So back into verse three, Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother in the land of Seir, the country of Edom, instructing them. Thus, you shall say to my Lord Esau, thus says your servant Jacob, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, male servants and female servants. I have sent to tell my Lord in order that I may find favor in your sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob saying, we came to your brother Esau and he is coming to meet you. And there are 400 men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. He divided the people who were with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two camps, thinking if Esau comes to the one camp and attacks it, then the camp that is left will escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord, who said to me, return to your country and to your kindred that I may do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the deeds of steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For with only my staff, I crossed this Jordan. And now I have become two camps, become two camps. Please deliver me from the hand of my brother. From the hand of Esau, for I fear him that he may come and attack me. The mothers with the children, come attack me, the mothers with the children. But you said, I will surely do you good and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So he stayed there that night. And from what he had with him, he took a present for his brother Esau, 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 200 oos and 20 rams. 30 milking camels and their calves, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. Then he handed over to his, over to his servants every drove by itself and said to his servants, pass on ahead of me and put a space between drove and drove. A little side note there, JD. Does that give you an idea of how big Jacob's uh, uh, group is? Yeah. Because the portion that he took, mm. a portion, a present was... 200 female goats, 20 male, go uh, male goats, 200 ooze, 20 rams. Like, he wasn't traveling like just him and two people. Like, yeah, it's not a lot. He kept walking yeah. down the street. <laughs> yeah, it's not a lot travel. You know, it's not like a quick hop and a skip to the next, to the next town. This is like you moving an entire nation. <laughs> like yeah. 200 plus. It's, it's a lot of things, yeah. Amen. He instructed the, uh, the first, when Esau, my brother, meets you and asks you, to whom do you belong? Where are you going? And whose are these ahead of you? Then you shall say, they belong to your servant, Jacob. They are a present sent to my Lord Esau. And moreover, he is behind us. He likewise instructed the second and third and all who followed the droves. You shall say the same thing to Esau when you find him. And you shall say, moreover, your servant, Jacob, is behind us. For he thought... I may appease him with the present that goes ahead of me, and afterward I shall see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. So the present passed on ahead of him, and he himself stayed that night in the camp. 
So what do we see here? Let's just stop real quick. Again, a lot of historical narrative really just walking through this moment. We see Jacob in fear again of his brother who drove him out. Like, I mean, it was fear that drove him away. And here he is back. And immediately he's worried like he's going to kill me. <laughs> like, right? He's on his way here with 400 men. Yeah. So he turns to God and points to the fact that I'm unworthy, but you promised me something, Lord. And if he kills me, this can't be done. That's what he's recognizing because God said, my, my people will be, a, you can't number them, right? The numbers are the same. Well, how's that going to happen, Amen. Lord, if I die here? Um, and then he goes yeah. into obviously trying to appease Esau to calm him by sending these gifts and presents before him. Do you think it's like a little, it's a, it's a case of a little bit of a guilty conscience because, because he knows he deceived Esau early on and pretended to be him. Do you think he's like, like this plays a, a part of, of that fear. Yeah, I absolutely would agree there because if you really think about it, a lot of times when we see someone who believes that they were done wrong, they mention that to God. Like, why is this person pursuing me? Lord, why, don't allow them, whatever. But we, what, what, what we see is Jacob is full on understanding of his guilt. Like, I don't see anything in here like he's blaming yeah. Utah. You don't see him saying, yeah. how dare yeah. my brother. In, in fact, yeah. he, sends, yeah. he sends all these gifts like, Deep down yeah, inside, yeah, yeah. he probably knows like Esau's angry and and rightfully yeah. so. <laughs> hey man, yeah, it's like as I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna get it now. Like like I, I know what I did and and I, I'm scared. So <laughs> absolutely, that's I would I would agree with that one hundred percent. And now to everybody's favorite part: the same night he arose and took his two wives his two female servants and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the uh, Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and everything else that he had. And Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go. For the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed, Peniel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of the thigh. So... Let's let's go ahead and roll back in here before you take over in wow. chapter thirty three. Yeah. So obviously you you're probably wondering, <clears throat> right? Like, what is happening here? <laughs> what is yeah. what is happening yeah. here? Right? So we see this person show up, and it just jumps straight to that. Like when uh, it said, uh, "Where is it? Where is it at? Here it is." Um, and Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. Like it just jumps into that. Like wait, wait, wait a minute, bro was just with his family walking with his family and then now he fighting and he fought all the way till the morning they was going at yeah him. yeah and it's funny because it's almost like it says that the uh, that the man it's, t it's it's not telling us who it is yet but the man obviously was he couldn't prevail against jacob i don't believe obviously for one second that god couldn't prevail it was more of this uh more of the say that jacob didn't quit jacob didn't didn't break Jacob didn't say, yeah. you know what, I give up, right? Because at the end of the day, that word, <clears throat> that word prevail is actually very interesting. What does Jesus say? He said that the gates yeah, of hell, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, the gates of hell will not prevail. Well, what does a gate do? A gate guards, and when it prevail, uh, uh, you know, if it won't prevail, the gate's going to break down, and then you can go through, right? So we see that Jacob didn't quit. That's the way I see it. But then God's like, all right, you need to, <laughs> you need to. You need to go ahead and just, all right, you're done. Tap them on, just tap. Give him a little tap. Give him a little tippity tap. Hip pops out. And then we ask, see <laughs> Jacob's asking him what is his name. And then he says, you know, that doesn't matter. But then Jacob names it uh, Peniel, which means I have seen God face to face. Yeah. Jacob that, 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 that's that's all I want to put in my passage. Yeah. Amen. 
that 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 was that was the main thing that I wanted to point out. That that their face to face thing. You know, again, we we can like <laughs> you can dive into this, and and there's there's various different interpretations when it comes to this. So again, like whatever we are saying, we're not saying well that's that's the authority. That's that's what, what that's the authority, and then what we're saying is 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 unequivocally true. Um, do your own digging but ultimately that they that we have seen god face to face we we can go right back to where we started in in genesis where we see god walking in the garden with adam and eve and we can see the same with moses which we're still getting to um on the mount we can get you know as as we go through we will see various passages in scripture where we can see this um parallel of having seen god face to face because we spoke about it earlier today on the podcast and we've spoken about it again i I, I always do this but i will always do this because we have spoken about it is where we see the scripture and and this is where the atheist will say okay well this contradicts um because the one scripture says you know no one has seen god and then in the next verse you know, Jesus says to us in John that whoever has seen me has seen the Father. So this is where we as Christians can go, well, they saw an image, whether the image they saw was Christ as they saw him in his earthly ministry or not, is regardless. What they saw, the same with Abraham seeing God, you know, <laughs> revealed to him at the tent in Genesis 18. Again, we cannot say if it was the exact same image as Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry. But what we can say is, is that they knew for a fact that it was God and, and that's what matters. Amen. Yeah. I fully agree with you there. The people that think that Jesus has to look the same in, in eternity past that he did in the flesh is a weird one for me, but yeah, I truly believe 100% that this is uh, Jesus because Jesus has always been the image of the invisible God. All right. So, um, Definitely, Amen. Definitely that's agree. the main thing. It, it was the cross. That's that's where we agree. Yeah. Amen. All right. Let's go ahead and dive into uh, chapter 33. You go ahead and take it, bro. For sure. Genesis chapter 33. And Jacob. Okay. Well, you're going to have to do the the highlighting thing again so that, I, <laughs> you know, when you scroll. Yeah, we're right at the top. Uh, if I scroll, I'll do it. Yeah. Cheers. So. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau was coming and 400 men with him. So he divided the children among Leah and Rachel and the two female servants. And he put the servants with their children in front, and then Leah with her children, and Rachel and Joseph lost of all. He himself went on before them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother but Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him we see the same reference uh just a quick cross reference we see the same thing in Acts chapter 20 where Paul delivers a message and they fall on his neck and kiss him and embrace him so this is a common expression that we see throughout scripture and they wept and when Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the women and children, he said, Who are these with you? And Jacob said, The children whom God has graciously, graciously given your servant. Then the servants drew near and, they, and, and their children and bowed down. Leah likewise and her children drew near and bowed down. And last, Joseph and Rachel drew near and they bowed down. Esau said, What do you mean? by all this company that I had met. And Jacob answered, to find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. And Jacob said, no, please. If I have found favor in your sight, then accept my presence from my hand. For I have seen your face, which is like seeing the face of God. What a, what a claim to make. And you have accepted me. Please Accept my blessing that is brought to you because God has dealt graciously with me. And because I have enough, 
Thus he urged him, and he took it. Then Esau said, Let us journey on our way, and I will go ahead of you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the, that the children are frail, and that the nursing flocks and herds are a care to me. If they are driven hard for one day, all the flocks will die. Let my Lord pass on ahead of his servants, and I will lead on slowly. At the pace of the livestock that are ahead of me and at the pace of the children until I come to my Lord in Seir. So Esau said, let me, leave, let me leave you with some of the people who are with me. But he said, what need is there? Let me find favor in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir. But Jacob journeyed to Succoth. And built himself a house and made booths for his livestock. Therefore, the name of the place is called Succoth. And Jacob came safely to the city of Shechem, which is the land of Canaan, on his way from Padan Aram, and he camped before the city. And from the sons of Hamar, Shechem's father, he bought for a hundred pieces of money a piece of land on which he had pitched his tent. There he erected an altar and called it El Elohi Israel. <laughs> I think it's, it's interesting. So we see this moment where Jacob's freaking out. He's scared. And then we see Esau finally arrive. And it's not with the anger. In fact, Jacob said, what did he say? That seeing your face is as seeing um, uh, uh, the face of God. And, and I wonder wow. if in that moment, yeah. what he is saying is that he's seeing a, a, a level of love and grace from him that it, it was blowing man. his mind. Like the Holy Spirit yeah. went ahead of him and touched uh, Esau because what did Jacob do? He prayed, said, Lord, you, you, you said that, you know, go home. Mm, I need you mm, to deliver mm. me, protect me. And then here comes Esau, not the man that he thought that was coming. He comes with peace. Yeah. He comes with calm. And it's like, Jacob's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like a relief and now we Bad see Jacob bro. still though trying to be instead of just being like oh cool I'm good I'm, I'm a I'm a dip off no he still is trying to though make right he's trying to make yeah. right with Esau he said please accept what I bring to you accept these gifts he wants to do so and and where we see this you know destined outcome of a of a of a war that it was looking like right you got a group headed this way a group headed this way you're like Esau is going to try and kill them they're going to clash and then what ends up happening is two brothers and i love how the response that um that uh, we see Esau say at one point he even calls him brother he's uh, where does he say he said i have all that i need brother um, yeah, it's beautiful that, yeah, that that's the, the reintroduction we see there. And it's just evidence that your fears sometimes don't take into account God's power and mercy and, and, and yeah. mercy. And we have to remember that it's not about like, he's going to accomplish his mission. This was the theme on the last episode. I feel like we really talked about, he's going to accomplish his mission. I think a lot of times in today's society, JD, like we look around and we think like, we should be doing better. We should be, you know, at a better state of how we're doing things. And what about this? And what about that? And we have fears and anxieties. But like, if I zoomed in on a beautiful piece of art to the max, you see pixels, right? And one pixel by itself isn't beautiful. But when you can zoom out to God's view, to how he sees all of creation, and those pixels begin to come together, you see a beautiful image of what God is doing, what God is creating. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing. We got to be able to look at it from what God is doing rather than from our mind, from our own eyes. He's over here like, oh, Esau going to kill me. Esau going to get me. The Lord told you you good, right? Like, Did the Lord tell you you good? He told you go yeah. back? If he told you go and back, I think, good. I think it's also just a testament of, of you know, and, and again, this is just me going at something, yeah, chewing at a bone, where we try and make something in our minds that isn't like, Jacob's like dead set on the fact that like he's fearful. His brother's just going to rip him to shreds. Um, and, and God's already spoken and he's got this thing in his mind. Like this is how he's going to react. And sometimes we do the same thing. Like we expect the worst and, and we create, we create these mountains out of molehills when, when God's in control, like we shouldn't be anxious and we shouldn't be fearful because we're his people. And we're his children. So, like, trust God, bro. That's that's what it comes down to. 
I just realized that was a short chapter because I've, I've been trying to like kind of just flip it uh, back and forth on chapters. I'm like, we had 34 already, but yeah, it was only 20 verse chapter. So verse 30, I mean, chapter 34, let's go ahead and dive back into it. Um, now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born to Jacob, went out to see the women of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, the prince of the land, saw her, he seized her and lay with her and humiliated her. This is one of the parts of the Bible that a lot of people struggle with. Let's talk about it. You know what's happening here. I don't think I have to say the word for you to know what just happened. And his soul was drawn to Dina, the daughter of Jacob. He loved the young woman and spoke tenderly to her. So Shechem spoke to his father Amor saying, get me this girl for my wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled his daughter Dina. But his sons were with his livestock in the field. So Jacob held his peace until they came. And Amor, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. The sons of Jacob had come in from the field as soon as they heard of it, and the men were indignant and very angry because he had done an outrageous thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, for such a thing must not be done. But Hamor spoke with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him to be his wife. Make marriages with us. Give your daughter to us and take our daughters for yourselves. You shall dwell with us and the land shall be open to you. Dwell and trade in it and get property in it. And Shechem also said to her father and to her brothers, let me find favor in your eyes and whatever you say to me, I will give. Ask me for a great, ask me for as great a bride price and gift as you will. And I will give whatever you say to me. Only give me wow. the young women to be my wife. Mm. I know wow. that a lot of people want to, and we're going to keep going, but a lot of people want to really sit here. And, and I've heard people talk about this, like your Bible, yeah. condo your, your God condones this. This is historical narrative. Okay. Yeah. Every word that you read in scripture is not God giving a command, right? There's such things as indicative writing, imperative writing. Like you have to understand this isn't, the Bible doesn't hide from its dirtiness. Yeah, That's what I yeah. think that people uh, struggle with. The Bible doesn't hide from the dirtiness of sinners, right? So yeah. we see something happening here. We have to understand back then. See, here's, I think, why people struggle, J.D. People imagine this happening today, and therefore they imagine things how it is today. And I'm not trying to say that there was ever a point where this was okay. Mm -hmm. What I'm mm -hmm. saying is the outcome changes because back then you did give up a, a daughter to join families together, to join tribes together. So that part's normal right the, the, yeah, they're giving yeah, unto yeah. a daughter they're receiving a, do, a a payment for it i mean they still do it in many countries in fact i just saw a mm -hmm. video this morning that was heartbreaking of a family in the middle east a muslim family in the middle east forcing their daughter to sign marriage certificate she didn't want to it was heartbreaking but, but back this, then this is yeah oh go ahead i was just gonna say back this, then this is normal because <laughs> we see her you know uh, uh the women in this in this time understood it mm. Uh, it's funny, like this morning I was having a conversation with, with, with our sister Selena and, and I said the same thing, you know, we've, we've got to look at the cultural con context and, and when we read second Timothy three sixteen and it says that all scripture is breathed out inspired by God, we need to remember that just because it's described in the Bible doesn't mean it's prescribed. So, so like a lot of people look at a description and think it was, you know, God prescribed it that way. Like this was not God's perfect will for his people. We, we've got to remember that the Bible is also describing perfectly for us the rebellion of mankind. Like mm -hmm. this is something we've got to look at is, is that we see rebellion, we see sin, and we see people moving in an opposite direction to which God has before time said, like, this is the way. And, and we, we always going to be like, oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to veer off to the left. I'm just going to go slightly to the left on this one. Um, I, I'm going to take the high road on this one, or I'm going to take the low road on that one. And, and ultimately, again, just <clears throat> to not go too far down a rabbit hole, we, I'll just say it like I just said it. Just because it's described doesn't mean it's prescribed. And, and, that's where you need to make the assertion and, and read it in its cultural context.
Yeah, and as we keep going, you'll see that this wasn't okay with people in the present time. I mean, even then as well, right? Like some of this was disturbing. We saw for a minute that the you know Jacob had to keep the peace because he knew his his sons was gonna come and have a problem about this. And then if we keep going, we see the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and his father Amor deceitfully because he had defiled their sister Dina. They said to them, we cannot do this thing to give our sister to one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a disgrace to us. Only on this condition will we agree with you, that you will become as we are by every male among you being circumcised. So they were, they were aware that you are not even of Jew. You have not, not even of this Jewish culture. You can't, you can't do that. They also are aware that Jacob's lineage is important, right? Like there's a lot of factors happening. Then we will give our daughters to you and we will take your daughters to ourselves and we will dwell with you and become one people. I know y'all see that highlight on screen. Why does Mike have the word one highlighted there, JD? Why do you think uh, uh, Mike has the word one highlighted there? Again, it cut. You know, the Lord our one is a cut. The Lord our God is a cut. <laughs> the Lord <Yeah>. our one. <laughs> and yet here we see your daughters and us and them, and we will become one, one. people. Just want to throw it yeah. out there. And so it literally word, is that. It's translated exactly that way. Yeah, that word right there is a unity, but we'll keep going. When every male among us is circumcised as they are circumcised, will not, wait, is it mine in the right place? That was at the first, the second one. But if you will not listen to us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughters and we will be gone. Their words pleased Amor and Amor's sons Shechem. And the young man did not delay to do this thing, to do the thing, because he delighted in Jacob's daughter. Now, he, <laughs> side note, if you think about it, that's, my man, I mean, I'm not, again, not condoning anything this barbaric man did, but he was willing to go get cut up <laughs> as a man. Like, I'm just, I look, Listen, I'm not condoning nothing, but any man willing to get circumcised in adulthood with most likely a blade made of flint, because you got to remember where they're at. <laughs> like, ain't no <laughs> anesthesia. Ain't no, ain't, it is, ain't going to be easy, yeah. bro. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Can you imagine? That's crazy. Like, later on, when we get to, uh, is it Gen is it Deuteronomy? Or, uh, I forget where, but... Yeah, Levitical and, law, Deuteronomy. Yeah, yeah. Well, when when they cross over the uh, the 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 river, it says that when they got to the other side, he circumcised again every man. Yeah, yeah. It's like, wait, pause. Yeah, yeah. What you <laughs> what you mean, bro? I got, I got questions. <laughs> I don't know about you, JD, but it's like we had to get circumcised. As that's 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 <laughs> whew, that's rough. <laughs> Asshole. I'm going to take, yeah, I'm going to take the tip off. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's basketball, the tip off. All right, there we go. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to keep going with that one. Sound clip, clip it for the future. These men are at peace with us. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So, so, so Amor and his son Shechem came to the gate of their city and spoke to the men of their city saying, these men are at peace with us. Let them dwell in the land and trade in it. For behold, the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters as wives. Let us give them our daughters. Only on this condition will the men agree to dwell with us to become one people. When every male among us is circumcised as they are circumcised. Mm -hmm. Will not their livestock, their property, and all their beasts be ours? Only let us agree with them and they will dwell with us. And all who mm -hmm. went out of the gate of his city listened to Amor and his son Shechem, and every male was circumcised. All who went out of the gate of his city. Another side note here. <laughs> when people think about the type of lifestyle that exists back then, think about for a second how one man just convinced a bunch of men to let them get their you-know-what cut for the promise of land, cattle, sheep, and safety. Like, I know we joke. But people get very confused because we sit in 2023 and we look back at them and we judge them by why didn't they do this? It is survival. It is in a desert with a tent and crops and farm animals. And like, if you don't have that, it's starvation. So here's an opportunity to join with a very powerful group because Israel had got on their side. You heard Jacob say it earlier, like he was like, not Jacob, um, 
uh, well, no, yeah, Jacob also says it. Like you see him saying, like the Lord has blessed me with this. And Abraham, Abraham had all types of stuff as well. Like the Lord blesses those that He promised uh, that He will uh, bless. So they chose all of them to get circumcised for those things. Right, the only one of them was getting a wife out of this, really. Like, I mean, yes, they were all going to get the the daughters in a sense, but only one's guaranteed this one wife that he's like really focused on. He pitches to them, like, "Hey, guys, we can dwell; with, they will dwell with us, and and their livestock and their property and their beasts will be ours. Only let us agree with them, and they will dwell with us. You know, all we got to do is a little snip, snippity, snip, snip." Like how yeah. how hard times got to be. So next time you ask why they had servants, I want you to remember that people were willing to cut things off to eat. <laughs> but again, this is this is this is. I mean, we go to the book of Galatians, which we which we get to later, and you see why when you read this, and then you go read that, you see why Paul is looking at the Galatians, going like, "What's going on with you lot?" Like. What's wrong with your brains right now? Because like <laughs> Jesus has come, he's done this thing and you want to put yourself back under that. Like what's wrong with you? So <laughs> anyway, we'll get there in 10 years as Mark said previously. Yeah. Now ten, I want to really ten, focus on this, this next portion right now um, because, and then we're going to dive in on it on the third day when they were sore, sore dudes just got things cut off. Two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dina's brothers, took their swords and came against the city while it felt secure and killed all the males. They killed Hamor and his son Shechem with the sword and took Dina out of Shechem's house and went away. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and plundered the city because they had defiled their sister. They took their flocks and their herds, their donkeys and whatever was in the city and in the field and all their wealth, all their little ones and their wives, all that was in the house, they captured and plundered. So actually, let's finish. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, you have brought trouble on me by making me stink to the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites and the Perizzites. My numbers are few. And if they are gathered, if they gather themselves against me and attack me, I shall be destroyed both I and my household. But they said, should, should he treat our sister like a prostitute? So this is also where you notice a lot of people don't talk about this part, right? That try to use it against Christians about Jacob trying to give his wife, I mean, give his daughter. Now pay attention to what's really happening. What's really happening is Jacob was more worried about how he treats others to make sure that the land prospers because he knows he has a mission from God. So he here he is again trying to handle things on his own, saying, you know what? I'll give my daughter up. Just like we saw Lot try to give his daughters up, right? We see people that try to do things that are dumb. Jacob's brothers, I mean, uh, his sons didn't want to play that. Nah, yo. Yeah, yo. What you did to my sister, yeah. like it's got to be paid for. They wiped it all out. But at the end of the day, yeah. what Jacob is saying is true, though, in a sense, because we're told to not repay hate with love, to not repay evil with evil. I mean, to repay hate with love and not repay evil with evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, I was um, going to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got that a wrong way around. <laughs> um, a wrong way around. So we have a dilemma here because a lot of us in the flesh, when we read that part about the brothers, we're like, yeah, get them. Get them. Get them right, like in the flesh. Yeah, like for real. I don't like to see a woman hurt. I saw a video just uh, recently uh, of this t these two young men in California beating up these two women. It was on uh, Twitter. Made me sick to my stomach. Not just because these grown men were straight up hitting these women, but that there were men walking by on camera and didn't do anything. And it's like I get sick to my stomach, right? And I would want to protect the woman. And I, so I get the brothers wanting to protect their sister, but what could have been grabbing their sister and running became a slaughter of many, of men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, they had to take their little ones and their wives because they had no one to take care of them. Also, side note for the apologetic at heart, people will be like, why would God allow, you know, Israel to take people's wives and kids? Because we see this sometimes in battle. Remember what we just talked about? They were willing to cut off the skin of their, uh, you know what, just for food. Well, now if there's no husbands, no fathers, if you don't take these little ones and their wives, they will die. No one's to care for them, yeah. right? You, back then, you had to work the land. This wasn't something you could just do. It wasn't, you know, <laughs> feminism. <Not an> option. <laughs> yeah, they, when, men were providers for a reason. The jobs were very hard. So I just wanted to throw yeah. out there. Um, Labor, but, man. 
yeah, we wrote chapter 35. I'm going to put it right on screen for you here. Take your time reading it because I have to run real quick, but I'll be right, right back. You go ahead and rock out. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, we see chapter 35. There's quite a lot of meat now. Jacob, Jacob returns to Bethel and God said to Jacob, arise up and go to Bethel, dwell there. Make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, put away the foreign gods that are among you and purify yourselves and change your garments. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel so that I may make there an altar to the God who answers me in the day of my distress and has been with me wherever I have gone. That's just so profound. I'm going to just read that again. Jacob says, put away the foreign gods that are among you and purify yourselves and change your garments. Let us arise and go up to Bethel so that I may make there an altar to the God who answers me in the day of my distress and has been with me wherever I have gone. I mean, that's that's Genesis 35 verse 3. So like that's this is a point where where even you guys listening in on TikTok, like make a note, <clears throat> make a note of that because God answers, God answers in the day of distress and he is with you wherever you go verse four so they gave to jacob all the foreign gods that they had and the rings that were in their ears jacob hid them under the terebinth tree that was near shechem and as they journeyed a terror from god fell upon the cities that were around them so that they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. And Jacob came to Luz, which is, that is, Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him, and there he built an altar and called the place El Bethel, because their God had revealed himself to him when he fled from his brother and Deborah, Rebecca's nurse who died and she was buried under the oak tree below Bethel. So we called its name Alon Bakut. God appeared to Jacob again. And when he came to Padam Aram and blessed him, and God said to him, your name is Jacob. No longer shall your name be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. I mean, here is the, here's where we get it. <clears throat> Most people know, want to know or ask the question, here you have it. Genesis chapter 35, here is where we see Israel, which was prophesied, which was the promise, now coming into fruition. So he called his name Israel and God said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply the same instruction given to his gra grandfather be fruitful and multiply a nation and a company of nations shall come from you and kings shall come from your own body the land that i gave to abraham and isaac i will give to you and i will give the land of your offspring after you and then god went up from him in the place where he had spoken with him and Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he had spoken with him, a pillar of stone. And he poured out a drink offering on it and poured oil on it. So Jacob called the name of the place where God had spoken with him, Bethel. And then they journeyed from Bethel when they were still some distance from Ephrath. Rachel went into labor and she had hard labor and when her labor was at its hardest the midwife said to her do not fear for you have another son and as her soul was departing for she was dying she called his name ben oni but his father called him benjamin 
So Rachel died and she was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a pillar over her tomb. It is the pillar of Rachel's tomb, which is there to this day. Israel journeyed on and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Eder. While Israel lived in the land, Reuben went and lay in the Bilha, his father's concubine, and Israel heard of it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve, and the sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Ishkar, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel, Joseph, Benjamin, and the sons of Bilha, Rachel's servant, Dan, and Naphtali. The sons of Zilpah, Leah's servant, Gad, and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padan Aram. And Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamre, or Kiritiath Arba, that is Hebron where Abraham and Isaac had sojourned, now the days of Isaac were 180 years. And Isaac breathed his last, and he died, and was gathered to his people, old and full of days. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Amen. So just more, more of the, uh, what, what do we call it in the last episode? The middle of the road journey, right? So now we're kind of on that road journey to where the next location is going to be or what the next real main thing is. So here goes one of those chapters. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and go. Through. Let's go ahead and just punch on through it. These are the generations of Esau, that is Edom. Esau took his wives from the Canaanites, Adah, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, Ohalabama, the daughter of Anah, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite, and Basemath, Ishmael's daughter, the sister of Nebaioth. And Ada bore to Esau, Eliphaz, Basemath bore Ruel, and Ohalabama bore Jeosh, man, Jalam and Korah. These are the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the members of the household, his livestock, and all his beasts, and all his property that he had acquired in the land of Canaan. He went into a land away from his brother Jacob, for their possessions were too great for them to dwell together. The land of their sojourning could not support them because of their livestock. So Esau settled in the hill country of Seir. Esau is Edom. These are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in the hill country of Seir. They, uh, these are the names of Esau's sons. Eliphaz, the son of Adah, the wife of Esau. Ruel, the son of Basemath, the wife of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kenaz. Tima was a concubine of Eliphaz. Esau's son, she bore Amalek to Eliphaz. Whew. These are the sons of Adah. Esau's wife. These are the sons of Ruel, Nahath, Zerah, Shema, and Mazah. These are the sons of Basemath, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Ohab, Ohalabama, the daughter of Anah, the daughters of Zibion, Esau's wife. She bore to Esau, Jewash, Jalam, and Korah. <sighs> <laughs> I, I deserve this though, JD, because I got you that last yeah, you, time where yeah, you had yeah. to read I, all I had that I had that Enoch one and, <laughs> and I was like it's names for days. <laughs> all right, guys. We are not gonna we're gonna read it. Let's go. No, we're gonna bro, make it fun. You, no, we're gonna make this fun. <laughs> These are the chiefs of, the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn of Esau, the chiefs Timon, Omar, Zepho, Kanaz, Korah, Gatam, and Am Amalek. These are the chiefs of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Adah. These are the sons of Ruel, Esau's son, the chief Nahath, Zerah, Shema, and Miza. These are the chiefs of Ruel in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Basmath, Esau's wife. These are the sons of ah Ohalabama, Esau's wife, the chiefs Juash, Jalam, and Korah. These are the chiefs born of Ohalabama, the daughters of Anah, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Esau, that is Edom, and these are their chiefs. <laughs> 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 
You ain't never heard no one read the names like that. I was I was feeling like I was about to give a sermon. You know what's interesting though? He's dying over there. <laughs> Hold on. I, I forgot to do it last time to embarrass him. Real quick. I'm gonna put <laughs> him on camera so y'all can see how he be dying. <laughs> yeah, he's choking. When you when you hear silence, it's not him done laughing. He's trying to inhale. Um it's interesting though because <laughs> Nothing about this screams uh, mythology, right? Like you might be bored of this, but this is called historical literature. This is how documentation happens. This is how uh, uh, history gets written down and, and, and put into place, right? They, they have to name these names, right? It's, it's a lineage. <sighs> Are you ready? We got a whole bunch to go. Hold on. We're at verse 20. We still, oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh yeah, we got, we're, half, we're halfway there. These are the sons of Seir, the Horite, the inhabitants of the land, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Dishon, Ezer, and Dishon. These are the chiefs of the Horites, the sons of Seir in the land of Edom. The sons of Latan were Hori and Hemim, and Latan's sister was Timna. These are the sons of Shabal, Alvin, Manahath, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. These are the sons of Zibion, Ai, and Anna. He is the he is the Anna who found the hot springs in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of Zibion his father. These are the children of Anna, Dishan and Ohalabam, Ohalabama, the daughter of Anna. That's the name that's the hardest in here. The Ohalabama. Ohala I mean, how else do you pronounce that? I don't know if I'm doing it right, but O H O L I B A M A H. Ohalabama. It's gotta be, right? I mean, yeah. Oh, it, holy bomber. Yeah. Oh, holy bomber. Oh, holy bomber. Yeah. I, I, I can't see you being far off with that. I'm one. trying my best. I'm, I'm still trying to draw my eyes, bro. Just give me a Take minute. We got plenty of time. We got a bunch of names to go. You take your time. These are the sons of Dishan, Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Sharon. These are the sons of Ezer, Bilan, Zavan, and Akan. These are the sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aran. These are the chiefs of the Horites, the chiefs Latan, Shabal, Zibion, Anad, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. These are the chiefs of the Horites, chief by chief in the land of Seir. These are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the Israelites. Bela, the son of Beor, reigned in Edom, the name of his city being Dinhaba. Bela died, and Joab, Jobab, the son of Zerah of Basra, reigned in his place. Jobab died, and Husham of the land of the Temanites reigned in his place. Husham died, and Hadad, the son of Badad, who defeated Midian in the country of Moab, reigned in his place, the name of his city being Avith. Hadad died, and Samla of Masraka reigned in his place. Samla died, and Sha'al of Rehoboth on the Euphrates reigned in his place. Sha'al died, and Baal Hanan, the son of Arkbor, reigned in his place. Baal Hanan, the son of Arkbor, died, and Hadan reigned in his place. The name of his city being Pa'al, his wife's name was Mehedabal, and the daughter of Matrid, the daughter of Mezabab, Me eh, Mezahab, these are the names of the chiefs of Esau, according to their clans and their dwelling places by their names. The chiefs Timna, Alva, Jetheth, Ohabalama, Elah, Pinan, Kenaz, Tema, Mibzar, Magdide, and Eram. These are the chiefs of Edom, that is Esau, the father of Edom, according to their dwelling place in the land of their possession. You ain't read nothing like that. Let me just go ahead and say that we are not even. We are when we get to numbers, bro. We are talking. When, and when we get to Leviticus, I'm calling out with COVID, and you're gonna have to just do the whole episode by yourself. Oh my, we, we even, bro. You read half a chapter. <laughs> he sounded like we were part of a Buster Rhymes video. Like People, this, this was like Buster Rhymes, the Genesis version. We're live on TikTok <laughs> while we do this with no comments on all the people that joined at that moment was just like, all right, what is happening? Waiting for a punchline too. Like, all right, is this going somewhere? And I just kept going, Zaba, 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 Ma, Ulala. <laughs> like people probably like, oh, he's yeah, not. I, I, I literally said, like, you're going to have to back that up. Like anyone who's listening to the podcast right now, you're going to oh, back that up and play it, at, play it at half speed. No, they fast forwarded, and if they did listen, they put it on two times speed. They're, matter of fact, hey guys, you can stop fast forwarding it now. You're good now.
This is where you yeah. wanted to go ahead and stop stop it at. And if you yeah, well, this is that, where we get back into the, the interesting bits. Yeah, yeah, your turn, JD. Choice of streams. Here we go. Like this is this is this is awesome. This is awesome. I'm I'm, I'm grateful that I got a turn to read something that's not a genealogy. Because let's just be fair. Like I got hit. I got hit with that early on, man. Like you were reading like a cool part, and then I was like genealogy, genealogy more genealogy so praise praise be to god joseph joseph's dreams genesis chapter 37 let's get back into it so jacob lived in the land of his father's sojournings in the land of canaan these are the generations of Jacob Joseph being 17 years old was pasturing the flock with his brothers he was a boy with the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah his father's wives and Joseph brought a bad report to them of their father now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he was the son of his old age and he made him a robe of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their fathers loved him more than all the other brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Hear this dream that I have dreamed. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field and behold the sheaf arose and stood upright and behold the sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf his brother said to him are you indeed to reign over us or are you indeed to rule over us so they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words then he dreamed another dream and he told it to his brothers and said behold i have dreamed another dream behold the sun the moon the 11 stars were bowing down to me but when he told it to his father and to his brothers his father rebuked him and said to him what is this dream that you have dreamed shall i and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves to the ground before you and his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept saying in mind. <clears throat> kept the saying in, in mind. Now, his brothers went to the pasture of their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. And he said to him, Here I am. So he said to him, go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock and bring me word. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron and he came to Shechem and a man found him wandering in the fields. And the man asked him, what are you seeking? I'm seeking my brothers. He said, tell me, please, where are the pasturing flock? And the man said, they have gone away for I heard them say, let us go down to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from afar, and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we will say that a fierce animal has devoured him, and we will see what will become of his dreams sarcastically mind you but when reuben heard it he rescued him out of their hands saying let us not take his life and reuben said to them shed no blood throw him into the pit near in the wilderness but do not lay a hand on him that he might rescue him out of their hand to restore him to his father so when joseph came to his brothers they stripped him of his robe the robe of many colors that he wore and they took him and threw him into the pit. The pit was empty and there was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat and looking up, they saw a caravan with Ishmaelites. So we've read the story of Ishmael and here we see the Ishmaelites 
coming from Gilead. And with their camels being gum, balm, and myrrh, <clears throat> on their way to carry it down to Egypt, then Judah, to his brothers, what profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let, and let not our hand be upon him. For if he is our brother, our own flesh, and his brothers listen to him. Then <clears throat> the Midianite traders passed by, and they drew jo Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. And when Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes. And he returned to his brothers and said, The boy is gone, and I, where shall I go? Then they took Joseph's robe and slaughtered a goat and dipped the robe in blood. And they sent the robe of many colors and brought it to their father and said, This we have found. Please identify whether it is your son's robe or not. And he identified it and said, It is my son's robe. A fierce animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his garments and put his sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted and said, No, I shall go down to Sheol to my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the God. Oh, man, let me tell you this right now. I so am much then. so excited for this part. So this is where I've been waiting to get one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And um, I want to start by saying this, guys, because this is actually, I'm, I can tell by looking at where we're at with time and knowing how long Joseph's story is, it's going to be a little two-parter because we're not going to finish Joseph's story. But if you are going through this with us, so you'll hear this before the next episode, I want you to be paying attention to a lot of things when it comes to Joseph. Because if you look back to the Sunday school teaching, you look back to back when we were younger, what was the Joseph story, JD? I don't know what Sunday school yeah. in Africa looks like. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean yeah, and, and there's, like. there's so much. Yeah, there's so yeah. much that's omitted from the Sunday school story. Because like, so here's what you hear in Sunday school. Correct me if I'm wrong. Joseph had his little rainbow jacket. His daddy yeah. loved him. His brothers didn't like yeah. him. And he sold yeah. him, they beat him up, sold him to slavery. And because Joseph was just, you know, a, a, a loyal person to God and obeyed God, he ended up becoming blessed even in his enemy's land. The end. Mm. Mm. That's it. That's and it. The, that that, and the of that up, story yeah. is be, be, be loyal to God and he'll bless you. Yeah. That's not the moral of this story in this Bible, in the Bible. No. It's not. There's no. so much happening here. By There's, no means. It, it's it's a it's God's sovereignty, not man's uh, you know faithfulness, right? So that's first yeah. of all. Second of all, I want mm. you to remember that Joseph's coat was given to him by his father, and what that means, uh, because you know back then he didn't have a lot of different possessions. This is a family thing. His father made him a coat of many colors. It wouldn't have looked like a rainbow jacket. It would have looked like a patchy jacket of different cloths, and 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 it was. It given to him from his people, from his father, who is the, you know, his father is very important. <laughs> his father is Israel. Um, and then you see also, you know, he, his name yeah. is Joseph still. We're going to learn about that changing in a little bit. Uh, so we see Joseph um, being a man of Israel, being a, a member of the people of Yahweh, living in the land of Yahweh, having a, a coat given to him by his father, a name given to him by his father, a lineage given to him by his father, and then a dream that he would rule. All right? That's all we see here. Um, yeah. And a lot of other things but are again, happening. In you said it at the beginning. You said it right at the beginning. God's sovereignty. God's mm -hmm. sovereignty. Uh, you, you can take whatever you want and people can add whatever spin they want and say, but he did and he did and he did that and he did this and he did this. No, he, his, his fruits are, are manifest when his brothers come asking for grain. He treats them no better than they treated him. So again, we see a, a, a case of tit for tat because you did, I'm gonna. Um, and ultimately, yes, 
God's sovereignty. Amen. And, and in case you didn't get that, God's sovereignty. <laughs> and, and, and now, can you still also take from this story the dedication and the hard work that, uh, that um, Joseph does? Yes. And we're going to get into that. So let's go ahead and roll into it because this is where this story begins. So we have Joseph and he's sold to Potiphar. And Egypt is obviously not where he wants to be. And we're going to find out why. Scroll down. Oh, actually, you know what? I forgot. Right here is a weird moment in Genesis. I just totally forgot about this, where it's going to stop talking about Joseph for a moment. So actually, we're not going to get into Joseph probably until the next episode, because that's right. It's going to take a brief uh, detour. Yeah, I just Dr. remember Grace. this. Uh, it takes yeah. a brief detour into into Jake, uh, not Jacob, uh, Judah. Yeah, Judah and Tamar. Oh my goodness, I just remembered about this. This is also a great, um, great moment, but it's a complete Judah and detour. Tamar, yeah, right. So, because we're gonna get to Potiphar and Joseph very shortly. Um, like I said, though, probably won't be in this episode uh, because we are running uh, near the end here soon in a little bit. Uh, so let's keep going though to chapter thirty eight. But again, shelf that. Remember what happened and. Don't let this Amen. break in the story for uh, cause you to forget those key parts that will play a, uh, an inc uh, an incredible role in Joseph's future. So chapter 38. Amen. It happened at that time that Judah went down from his brothers and turned aside to a certain Adalamite whose name was Hira. There Judah saw the daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua. He took her and went into her. And she conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Ur. She conceived again and bore a son, and she called his name Onan. Yet again, she bore a son, and she called his name Shelah. Judah was in Shezib when she bore him. And Judah took a wife from Ur, his firstborn. Ju yeah. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord put him to death. Then Judah said to Anon, Go into your brother's wife and perform the duty of a brother-in-law to her and raise up offspring for your brother. But Anon knew that the offspring would not be his. So whenever he went into his brother's wife, he would waste the semen on the ground so as not to give offspring to his brother. And what he did was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and he put him to death also. Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, remain a widow in your father's house till Shelah my son grows up. For he feared that he would die like his brothers. So Tamar went and remained in her father's house. In the course of time, the wife of Judah, Shua's daughter, died. When Judah was comforted, he went up to Timah, Timnah, to his sheep shearers, he and his friend Hera and Adulamite. And when Tamar was sold, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep. She took off her widow's garments and covered herself with a veil, wrapping herself up, and sat at the entrance of Enam, which is on the road of Timnah. For she saw that Shelah was grown up, and she had not been given to him in marriage. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute, for she had covered her face. He turned to her at the roadside and said, Come, let me come into you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. She said, What will you give me, that you may come into me? He answered, I will send you a young goat from the flock. And she said, If you give me a pledge until you send it, he said, What pledge shall I give you? She replied, Your signet and your cord and your staff that is in your hand. So he gave them to her and went into her. And she conceived by him. Then she arose and went away. And taking off her veil, she put on the garments of her widowhood. Now, so far, we're not done this chapter yet, obviously. But a lot of crazy stuff is happening right here. And obviously, us sitting in 2023, we've got to be sitting here like, okay, what? This is some yeah. uh, crazy reality TV type stuff. But I want you to understand what we yeah. see here. Judah's not a good man, right? We're, no one's saying Judah's a good man. Right. There's nothing about Judah that is, again, we've said this over and over. We're going to say this in every episode. Matter of fact, the entire Bible reading series we're doing should be titled uh, Wicked Men and a Great God. Like, that's what we're talking about. The same thing with David. Like, this is the thing about Bible stories. This thing about Bible stories and actually reading the Bible. Bible stories give you 90% the good side 
and 10% of the bad side because like it's like trying to paint this picture of moral absolute like morally these 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 guys were like somehow better than the others but this is not the case this is not the case god again we see god justifies the sinner and and this has been the case since the beginning this is not this is not some new thing god Amen. god justifies god justifies yeah and honestly we see what's happening here again if we look beyond thinking that every word in the bible is uh uh you know uh, prescriptive text and rather look at it as the descriptive text that it is you can see that what's happening here is god's sovereignty still working despite the terrible flaws of judah right so obviously judah went and had children with canaanites can't have that just mess up the whole bloodline who does judah lead to if you're listening to this you should know judah is the seed that is the promised seed right so there's 12 that come from um uh, uh, Israel. We had the 12 tribes, the 12 sons, but there's only one promised seed. So who is the promised seed? It is Judah. And who do we get from Judah? We get David. Who do we get from David? We get Jesus. Jesus comes through the lineage of Judah. Now, Judah can't be having kids with Canaanites. So he did have a kid with Canaanite and they can't be the seed. They cannot. They cannot carry that on. Uh, this is what we see constantly. So even though Judah is trying to get other kids to do it. And his other son, his other son's like, well, I don't want to, you know, have a child with her. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, this and that. And then he lied. So there he goes dropping down dead and stuff. A lot of crazy stuff is happening. But at the end of the day, God is focused on working his plan, working his will. And that will is that through the line of Israel, through the line of Abraham, through the line of Jacob, through these lines, we will get Jesus. Like period. That's a that's the main goal we need to understand. The Bible is not a book about a bunch of great men. It's a book about the coming of Jesus and our sinful ways prior to his arrival. That is what we're reading about. Now, let's keep reading though, because this story has so much more to unfold. It's a very interesting one. Yeah. When Judas sent the young goat by his friend, the Adul Adulamite, to take back the pledge from the woman's hand, he did not find her. And he asked the men of the place, where is the cult prostitute who was at Enaim at the roadside? And they said, no cult prostitute has been here. So he returned to Judah and said, I have not found her. Also, the men of the place said, no cult prostitute has been there. And Judah replied, let her keep the things as her own or we shall be laughed at. You see, I sent this young goat and you did not find her. So Judah understands it, 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 he don't want people to know what he did, but Judah was well aware of it. Obviously he saw her. He said, yo, what's up? But he don't want yeah. people to know what he did. He's so he's like, you know what? Just let her keep what she got, whatever. And then it says mm -hmm. about three months later, Judah was told Tamar, your daughter-in-law has been immoral. Moreover, she is pregnant by immorality. So now she's showing right three months later. And Judah said, bring her out and let her be burned as she was mm -hmm. being brought out. She sent word to her father-in-law by the man to whom these belong. I am pregnant. And she said, please identify whose these are the signet and the cord and the staff. <laughs> then Judah identified them and said, she is more righteous than I, since I did not give her to my son Shelah, and he did not know her again. So Judah realizes that, oh, wait a minute. She wasn't unfaithful. She's actually pregnant from when I went into her. She's pregnant from what I did. Um, this is on me. He, <laughs> Bro, can you imagine that? She put out his stuff like, well, these is his kids. You know who this is? Judah, you know who these, who, whose kids are these? <laughs> Bro got caught in the moment heavily. <laughs> when the time of her labor came, there was twins in her womb. And when she was in labor, one put out a hand and the midwife took and tied a scarlet thread on his hand saying, this one came out first. But as he drew back his hand, behold, his brother came out and she said, what a breach you have made for yourself. Therefore, his name was called Perez. Afterwards, his brother came out with the scarlet thread on his hand and his name was called Zerah. So then now we're about to drive back in. We're about to jump back into uh, Joseph here yeah, in a moment. Yeah, um, yeah. Depending on, let me look at the time. Uh, yeah, I think we should, I think we should go, we should go there next week because like we've done, we've done nine chapters. 
We done 32. nine. Thirty-two. Yeah, started oh, at thirty-two. We- Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely go there next then. Yeah. So let's just take a moment to just look at this at this situation again. A lot of understanding here. And I think this is a big problem with some people that they go into the Bible not understanding what they're even going into. Right. Yeah. If, 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 cause there's people out there that truly believe that, you know, they truly believe that we believe every word of the Bible is like commands of God. Like the verse numbers have been there for 5,000 years and that's how it was written. And therefore there's a verse for everything that we have to believe. And every verse that's in the Bible is a command. And so therefore, if you see polygamy, uh, Oh, God condones polygamy. If you see slavery, God condones slavery. If you see uh, cheating and affairs and adultery and murder, like, oh, God could. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. Again, yeah. Yeah. the Bible is a book about a bunch of wretched and sinful men that God uses for his purposes. Because what we intend to do, use for evil, yeah. God intends to use for good, which is also very interesting because if you really think about it now, that I'm like thinking about it out loud, J.D., this story coming right here might not be coincidence. Yeah. Right? Because what do we just see the prior to this? An evil act being done by the other children of Israel, right? Being done to Joseph. We see all yeah. his brothers doing an evil yeah. act. And we know that later Joseph's going to say what? What you intended for evil, God intended for good. Well, could Amen. we not take that same statement and look at what Judah's doing here? Like Judah yeah. was doing things he shouldn't have done. He saw a prostitute. A man that's supposed to be after God's heart, a man who loves the Lord. Now, granted, there's no law given yet, so it's a moral writing on the heart. But you know better because rec- he recognizes yeah, yeah. it, obviously. They know God, um, man. They know God. This is the thing. Yeah. They know God. They know the attributes and, of God and what he has declared. Yeah. And yeah. But yet, despite his evil actions, what you intend for evil, God will use for good. So maybe there's and, and I just want to just, right just want to hone in on that point you made. You know, this is what the atheist does. The atheist takes like scenarios and they go, "Look at your God, look at your God, look at your God." And and the God the atheist describes, guess what? That's a God neither me nor Mark follow. <laughs> we wouldn't follow that God any day of the week. We wouldn't. <laughs> you see, because the God the atheist is describing is not the God of the Bible. Yeah. It's not the God we follow. It's not the sovereign, all loving, all knowing, and all present God we follow. And I'm putting that in layman's terms for omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. So that's that's the God we follow. And, and well, they can't know him. Why, like yeah, they, can't they can't know him because that's what's unique about being a believer. You know, we can boast in the fact that we know him and he knows us because we have read his revelation. Amen. We have. Uh, you know, come to the cross on our knees. And that is what the Bible mm. talks about, about us knowing him. We know him. Mm. They don't know mm. him. So therefore they aren't judging. Uh, uh, I mean, no one can judge God, but they are trying to judge God. So when I say that, you know, they're not judging God properly. I'm not giving permission to judge God, but I'm saying they're not even judging God properly. In fact, what they really are doing is they're judging God by the actions of man. A lot of yeah. people judge God by the actions of man. If yeah, someone who exactly. claims the name of God or claims the title of God and does something evil, it's like, oh, look at what God did. Well, wait a minute. No. Yeah. If if yeah. I was to say, like, let's just pick a random person. Matter of fact, JD. If I was to run around America punching people in the face for the name of JD and it hit the news and it was like, this guy, Mike, is punching people in the face all throughout the country. He's traveling state to state. And he says, every time he hits someone in John Dre, we trust JD all day. This is what he wanted if you didn't want that and people are coming to you saying jd there's this guy he's a serial puncher like he's we haven't Mm -hmm. caught him he's wreaking havoc and he's doing it for you is this what you represent no i can't i mean i I, I was i was saying that and that's where our apologetics brain kicks in i know you think the same way but i was saying this to 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 a dude today i was like so if I take a Gordon Ramsay, I was like, who's a good, would you consider Gordon Ramsay a good chef? And he said, yes, he's one of the best. And I said, sweet. So if I take a Gordon Ramsay recipe and I absolutely butcher it, he says two pinches of salt and I put two tablespoons of salt. Ooh, I like this and the, analogy. And I'm like, and I butcher the recipe. Like I dish it up and you go, this is the worst meal I've ever eaten. Do you look at Gordon Ramsay and go, he's a terrible chef? Or do you look at me? I said, now that's the problem with the atheist. You look at bad representation of Christianity and you go, your God is. Just because some people can't 
can't properly represent the gospel and the God we serve, you then jump and you make the leap from looking at the representative of and blaming the creator himself. That's Amen. just stupid. Amen. Yeah, man, we're about to end on that one. That was an amazing analogy. Let's let that end right there with JD's fire. Um, JD, I appreciate <laughs> you just dropping that right there. We needed that. Let's all soak that in for a second. And if you really know what I'm actually doing by continuously talking with meaningless purpose, I'm actually just looking for this. Love you, my brother. Sometimes Love you have to man. delay while you're looking for the button, so you just keep scrolling on yeah. and on and on Pushing just the talking button, about button, something. Button, 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 button. <laughs> I love you, bro. <laughs> that was so good. As, good as always, as thank always. you so much for joining us. We ended on on chapter 38. So that means next episode, be back. We're going to be diving into the story of Joseph with chapter 39. Um, make sure that before the next episode drops next Friday at 8 a.m., uh, I would go back and read chapter 37. Go ahead and go back and get that story of the beginning of Joseph. So when we dive into chapter 39 going forward, uh, I'm going to make it a goal. I know that Joseph story is like 10 chapters long, I believe. Um, yeah, it's, it's long. Yeah. Ten let's go ahead. Like, yeah. Let, let's yeah. go ahead and hope that we can get it done in one episode, but I doubt that we will. No, we will. Uh, we're going to push on. That's gonna, let's, let's just give the heads up now that the, the episode following on this might be like a two and a half hour episode. A win like is a, a win. Two hour audio. A win's a win. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Uh, but with that, guys, we appreciate you as always, and we hope that you have an amazing and blessed day. Thank you for tuning in. Make Man. sure you like, you share, and uh, make sure that you guys are Jesus. into the word of God on your own. All our goal here is to drive you to be hungry for it. Um, so thank you Amen. for joining us. God bless and go in peace. Go in peace, guys.